Good afternoon. Now, welcome to uh, today's webinar, uh, Toughest Laser Marketing Dilemmas Explained. Uh, I'm Josh Chrysley, uh, Mecca's Laser Product Manager. Uh, today, we're going to roll through some, some things to quickly check to make sure you're making uh, excellent marks with your laser equipment. Uh, and the whole idea behind this is to have a conversation uh, with everyone here uh, to be able to ask questions. So if you have questions at the end, I'll be able to uh, unmute you uh, so you can hit the raise your hand button, ask a question, uh, and we can discuss any of the problems that you're dealing with. Uh, some, uh, some other exciting things we're doing. So this is our virtual uh, trade show since, since the COVID. No one's really uh, allowed to gather. We're not allowed to take out our equipment and, and go to a show. So you guys would typically come to a show and visit us. Uh, we're able to do it virtually though. So we are throughout the week doing several different shows, uh, showing off our equipment. We're doing lots of one-on-ones. So if you would like to schedule one, one, you have the opportunity to still do that. Um, so please, please take advantage of all that we're trying to offer uh, in replacement of actually physically traveling and, and meeting us at a show. So we'll be able to accommodate most all requests. So if even uh, if you had samples or planning on bringing to us, we can still do all of those uh, just in remote fashion. Uh, another reminder also, uh, there is a two o'clock today. You can still register for that. Uh, Scott Cunningham is gonna be doing that. Uh, his webinar is going to be uh, latest innovations uh, to gain that competitive edge. So you can still sign up uh, and become part of Scott's presentation here um, this afternoon. And that one's at two o'clock. So if you haven't checked that out, take a look at that. Uh, also keep in mind all the other things that I just said that, that are going on this week uh, that you have an opportunity to log into and, and uh, witness. So again, welcome. Um, again, I'm the laser product manager. I've been at MECO a little over eight years. Uh, I've been in the laser industry uh, going on 18 years now. So uh, I've been doing uh, laser specific uh, as a role uh, in my working career for a while. Uh, I've learned a lot, I've seen a lot. Uh, so hopefully if you have any tough questions or avenues you're going down and wanna bounce off of me, uh, I hopefully can direct you in a manner that, that can help answer some questions, uh, maybe, put you in a peace of mind if you're making a decision. Uh, so again, if you have a question here, when we get to the end, please feel free to raise your hand, uh, shoot a chat message if you don't have uh, a microphone. Uh, I'll watch it here on my panel and we can get to those questions. So let's kind of jump right into it here. Uh, again, we'd like to get through this so we can get to your guys' questions. So what we're going to talk about today are the three biggest uh, mistakes that, that are going to hurt your business uh, and and how do you combat it? What do you look for? How do you know? Uh, you might be making marks and you think they're good. Maybe you'll see something today in our, in our photos that'll uh, maybe pop out to you and say, hey, yeah, we're, we're maybe doing that right now. We need, to, we need to adjust or look at why this is happening. So we're going to cover some of that. We're going to look at uh, what's causing it and then what can you do to change it to get back to making good marks. Uh, and then again, we're going to have the, the Q&A at the end uh, to go over anything that you might have to ask me or talk about or discuss in the laser realm and technology. So obviously, when you have bad marks, if you're making a product and you have something mislabeled, uh, it, can, it can cause issues. Uh, it can cause traceability issues. It can cause issues further down the line for the end user uh, or the end uh, were the products ending out in the field. Uh, maybe it comes down to losing the ability to be able to recall uh, products back. So really have to pay attention, whether it's laser marking or stickers, stickers fall off. You could still have issues with laser marking. Um, you could have bad marks. You could be making marks that are just not readable. So that type of mark is as good as a sticker coming off in the field. When that happens, you lose that traceability factor. You can't track where that part's been, uh, where it's supposed to go, or the quality, or who, you, who even made the part. Uh, so some of the, the key factors, uh, the biggest issues that the companies uh, face with their laser equipment uh, are on the screen here. Uh, so what I'm demonstrating is uh, we'll go left to right, dirty lens, wrong focal distance, and a Fumex malfunction. Uh, we kind of have a funny note there. Uh, the photos are censored uh, to protect victim identity, uh, but these are big deals. Uh, if you can't read the mark, the mark is mark's no good. Uh, so you can see on a dirty lens, say an operator accidentally put their thumbprint on it, 
uh, or bumped it or there's a scratch for some reason on the lens, uh, you will actually see that. So as the light's coming down through to do its mark, it's being inhibited by the dirt, debris, uh, by a scratch, and you're gonna get a odd looking mark. That mark may still be readable, uh, as you can see in the photo there, uh, but it's not at its best quality. Therefore, once it gets out in the field, if this is out in an environment, there could be corrosion, there could be other things going on, uh, you might eventually lose that mark. So a dirty lens is a big one. That's one of the easiest to combat. That's as simple as just looking at the lens. If it's dirty, clean it. We have a procedure we can help you guys out with uh, to walk you through how to properly clean a lens. Uh, but that's one of the most common. Uh, the second is maybe your mark's disappearing or it's not engraving. You have this high-powered laser and maybe you're not even getting a mark anymore. Uh, and you've looked at the lens and, hey, yeah, that lens is clean uh, and we're still not getting a mark. Always check your focal distance. Uh, your focal distance is the offset from the, the lens housing, so the black anodized housing that holds the optics that's in the laser L. It's measured from that lens ring down to the part surface that you're marking on. If that's off, uh, whether it's too close or farther away, uh, your laser spot size is actually going to grow. So our lasers come with a focal stick or a distance that the operate, uh, let the laser will operate at its smallest spot size. So if you're outside of that spot size grows, because of the growth, your energy is spread out over a larger, wider area. And as it gets wider, the energy density is lower and you don't get the proper interaction with the substrate that you're trying to mark. Or it might mark, but it might mark at a reduced effectiveness. It might not remove as much material. It might, mark, might not make the mark as dark. Again, you still might get a mark like the dirty lens uh, problem, but it, it longevity of that mark is not gonna be there. Uh, so it's another thing to check your focal distance. Uh, and the last thing, as you're making a mark, if you're marking plastics or metals or anything that has uh, a debris factor or a fume factor coming off of it, you'd want to draw that away or out from the beam. So you would have a fume exhaust system drawing out the smoke or the debris or the metal or anything that's coming off of the surface uh, into a filtering system. If you allow that just to naturally come up off the part as it's marking, and if it's a lot, it can actually get in the way of the beam. So if you've ever watched a laser mark with your safety glasses or through the safety shield, uh, sometimes when you get a lot of debris coming off, you can actually see the, the, the smoke dancing up through the laser beam as it's, as it's doing its work. It looks cool, uh, but in the grand scheme of marking, it's, it's not cool for the mark in the end result. If you have too much in there, you're actually getting absorption because of that debris that's floating up off the surface. It's actually... It's, it's cutting down on the power that's actually reaching the marking surface. So it's, it's imperative that you're drawing and exhausting that fume away from the mark. Uh, so you make sure you're getting a nice clean mark. And you can see here in that, that right example where the, the fumes were actually bowing back into the laser beam. The mark started out nice, and then as it went along, it was, it's totally gone. Uh, so you want to make sure you're paying attention to that uh, and you're working through this. Uh, if you currently own a MECO system uh, right now and you're seeing some of this, we can walk you through. We have our service line that you can call at any time. Uh, you also, if you own a MECO laser system, this is something a lot of companies don't take advantage of or forget about it. Uh, you get the MECO Applications Lab for Life. So perhaps you're seeing this and you think you've checked all these things. Uh, you still have the ability to send us your part or a chunk of the material uh, for free sample marking and testing. And we can work through and try to figure out how, how you're making the mark and see if we can replicate the issues that you're seeing or give you a pinpoint or pinpoint uh, a path that'll go down and eliminate some of these issues. So you always have that. Uh, you'll have access to the application engineers at MECO uh, or even myself, if you'd like to give me a, a phone call or send me an email. Uh, we'll be able to walk through uh, and, and try to help you uh, either educate you on what you're seeing and how to combat it or show you a new method to do something you haven't thought of or haven't seen before. Uh, and again, you always have that uh, when you buy a MECO laser system uh, that's part of the MECO experience, you'll have us for life. So obviously when you make bad marks and if you're tracking uh, through any kind of business meeting and you're looking back uh, at deliveries or recalls or defective parts made, 
uh, you're going to see all these categories on the screen growing. And if you see any of these growing in your laser marking and it's based on traceability or anything that uh, the laser mark pertains to, you'll be able to know, hey, obviously, if these are growing, that's bad business. You don't want these to grow. You want to eliminate these as much as possible uh, so you can run an efficient, efficient, uh, efficient business. Um, being able to add traceability uh, is going to save your, your company a lot of headaches, uh, a lot of time, uh, and a lot of efficiency if you do have a recall. Uh, if you have a bad part out there, uh, having a, a, a designation or a mark on it uh, that's able to be traced means you don't have to pull the whole lot back from the field uh, to the factory. So it saves on logistics getting those parts back. Sometimes you, I mean, obviously if you made a bad part, you might have to pay for return shipping. Uh, if you've you're going to have to absorb all of that. So it's it's very key as you're taking on the traceability realm and starting to mark things uh, to start watching these categories. And obviously, if you see them going up and they relate to the laser, uh, you want to stop it. You want to figure out why, why that's happening uh, because you don't want to get into a point where you're making really bad business decisions and it's hurting the company. So as we talk, there's there's the three key things uh, that you want to always keep an eye on. Obviously, the first one is focal distance. So here's a good shot demonstrating the focal stick. Uh, here we have that white uh, piece. It's just an, uh, a Delrin rod right now that's cut to the length. Uh, and that is a tool that ships with every system as a quick setup. Uh, it doesn't mean you're actually using this day to day. Uh, because if you have it in an enclosure, our systems are set up to be zeroed to the breadboard. So if you have a one inch part, you can actually type one inch into the software and it will offset the laser for you. Uh, it's just something to check because through calibrations, through not cycling the system properly, maybe it has lost where that zero location is. Maybe the system has been turned off and on uh, inappropriately and the motors have lost where they're at and they're working in a relative position versus an absolute position. So you still have that stick to be able to throw it under the real quick to make sure, hey, I am correct. I am at the right offset. And I know for sure I'm making a good mark if I'm within that range. So that stick again goes from the bottom of the lens ring to the marking plane that you're trying to mark on. As long as you check that, uh, that definitely checks something off the list that, hey, at least I'm in focus. If I still have a bad mark, uh, then we'll move on. We'll look at the lens next, which we'll talk about. Uh, if you've ever been on the MECO website, um, we do have a service pages or service videos uh, on our YouTube channel that you can go on and we do demonstrate how to check these things and, and show these. So uh, if you have time, feel free to jump on the YouTube channel and you can search through some of these and, and see some of the stuff we'd, we'd like to see it in action. So we have our focal distance checked. What's the next thing we can check? Uh, obviously the lens. This is what's doing the focusing of the light. This is what's giving you the intense energy density uh, at the end of that focal distance so you can make your mark. Uh, you can remove it. So always be careful if you're removing it. I always recommend to keep the uh, lens covers that come with the system so you can put that back on the lens. And then as you're twisting it out of the enclosure, because some of the orientations could be tricky, you could palm that lens. And obviously that's just adding the oil, the hand oils, uh, dirt debris grease uh, onto that. So obviously it's gonna be dirty if you do that. Uh, but I always recommend keeping those covers. You can put it on and then unscrew the lens out of the system with that cover. That'll help protect it as you're removing it. Uh, in the photo here we show you could also wear, if you can't find it, we'll put on rubber gloves, something to uh, take the fact out that you could yourself make it dirty as you're removing it. So as you remove it, you can look at it. Uh, you can either look up at the system. If you're going to inspect the lens, obviously make sure you're following the safety uh, protocols. Uh, there are safety interlocks within the laser system. Uh, I like to be extra safety. If you're inspecting the lens, just turn the system off totally. Uh, use a flashlight, look across it. It is coated, so it has a a little bit like a mirror reflection to the surface that you can actually see, but you get it light and you can move the light across it. You'll be able to see dirt, debris, fingerprints, uh, and anything like that just by moving it. Or you can also look up in there and you can see it. Again, make sure it's, everything's off when you're looking at it, uh, just to be safe. Uh, we don't want any accidents to happen. 
uh, based on that because laser technology is dangerous, especially when it's coming uh, down through that lens. You're you're focusing the that injury, so uh, it's it's very critical to be safe as you're doing this. Uh, but inspect the lens. If it is dirty, uh, again, you can do your typical cleaning process if you have one. If you're not uh, on a preventive maintenance schedule now, you should probably think about it or at least starting to track it, look at it. I, I realize some parts and marks that you're making don't make a lot of debris. They don't make a lot of smoke. And you could, it's possible, go years without needing to even look at this lens and clean it. Uh, but it's good to track it and know that. If you haven't tracked it, you really don't know how long you should be waiting in between cleaning. So uh, it's good to start tracking it, at least looking at it, checking it daily. Uh, if your environment's really dirty, <clears throat> and this is uh, something that's popped up pretty quick and you found out that you need to clean your lens through maybe a service call, then you need to start tracking uh, sooner. Maybe you're checking it hourly to see how long can you actually go before you need to do a cleaning on the lens. Uh, maybe you're doing it once a shift, maybe once a day. Uh, like I said, it all depends on the application. You could go, in theory, years, uh, but at least annually you want to pull out that lens, look at it, clean it, uh, give it some care. Uh, because this is just like your body, this is the eyeball, essentially. Uh, if you lose your vision, you're not going to be able to function properly. Same with the laser. If, if it loses its sight or ability to focus, it's not going to be able to make the best marks that it can mark. Uh, again, on our website, we do have uh, YouTube videos showing how to clean it, uh, showing how to uh, properly clean it. Uh, it is key. I'll, I'll touch on a few key points. Uh, don't just grab a towel and wipe on it. Okay, that's huge fail. Don't want to do that. Now, what's going to happen is you're, if it's dirt, truly dirt, you can scratch the lens. If you scratch the lens, you're, you're going to cause some damage to it. Uh, definitely want to, don't want to do that. Uh, if you're wiping, you want to use... Uh, lens tissues or Q-tips, make sure you put on gloves. We always recommend to use acetone or alcohol. Drag in one direction uh, across. Don't go back and forth. You're going to scratch. Uh, drag it across, throw it away instantly because you're picking up the dirt. You don't want to put that back on the optic and pull it across. So new Q-tips, new lens tissue on each swipe. Uh, you'll slowly work across that lens and you'll get it, get it crisp and clean. You'll be able to make good marks quickly again. Uh, the final uh, point here. The number three is obviously if you're making fumes. So this is a good example. This is cork. Uh, this we're making actually, um, these are cup coasters. So when you're marking it, uh, this is CO2 lasers, so organic material. It's actually going to produce a lot of smoke. It's burning. Uh, that's how you're getting the dark mark. Obviously, if you're burning, you have combustion. So there's smoke coming off here. Perfect example. So you can see how that smoke's coming up off of it. If that is not being evacuated, that can get in the way of the laser beam. Uh, and like I stated earlier, that debris up in the laser beam actually cuts the power. It's doing some absorption uh, from, from the, the energy coming down through and all of the power that the laser is trying to put out to the part surface is not reaching there. So you wanna make sure you're pulling it away and out uh, of the laser beam. Uh, so you make sure you're getting a really good mark. And this, this applies even to non-organic. This is metals, uh, anodized aluminum. If you're doing a lot, uh, it might not look like you're doing a lot of debris off there, but if you've done a lot of anodized tags in an enclosure or in an enclosed space, after a while of doing it, you'll start to see that debris laying around everywhere. If you wipe your hand across it, now you have color on your hand. Uh, it's from dirt and debris. Uh, so it's something to think about. If you have that collecting anywhere in there, you need to be exhausting it out. Uh, or looking at a better method to get more draw out so you don't have that laying around or getting in the laser beam. So this is this is another key point uh, to be aware of. And like I said, if <clears throat> if you have any of these issues at any time, you can call our customer server uh, support line. You can call our applications team. Uh, if you have a question on, on a mark, you've looked through some of the stuff, doesn't really make sense, uh, you need help hey, this material is just not making sense to me. You can send it to us. Uh, we can walk you through the process uh, to, get, to get you up and running. That's our goal. Well, we not only sell laser equipment, uh, we look at it as a partnership. We want to be part of your team. We want to understand your process. And we want to be able to work through uh, and help you be, you know, attain your goals and dreams for your company. Uh, our typical process for the cells is, and it is changed over the years. We've gotten smarter. Uh, what we're looking at is we look to define your requirements. 
uh, we also look to assess the feasibility. Sometimes it, it might be what you're coming and asking for might be way outside our understanding or ability, uh, but we'll be able to work as we talk you through the process, what we can do to do what you're trying to achieve. So we do that technical feasibility within our integrations team. And then we finally design your solution uh, and, and deliver. Uh, we love to deliver new machines and we love to be able to partner with you to provide that lifetime service agreement with you too, uh, to be able to offer support for you. Like I said, every Mecco laser system uh, comes with lifetime support from the applications team. Uh, you also have our typical two-year warranty standardized on our equipment uh, for our service members to be on site, to, to provide uh, maintenance repairs, and also uh, to provide parts uh, within that two years. And we also offer extended warranty plans also, too, that'll continue on, uh, even so much as we'll, we'll do preventive maintenance for you, too. So if you don't have a large maintenance team or you don't have a laser specialist on site, uh, we can also partner with you to provide that lifetime service agreement where we can come in and help facilitate those things that you may or may not be missing. Uh, and we can do that for you and be able to help you on site while we're there too also, uh, which is really good. Our whole goal is to help you um, be successful in your own roles uh, and help grow your business. Uh, and like I said, we, we really like partnering. We look at it as a partnership more so than just selling uh, a piece of equipment. Uh, so that was that was my fluff. We'll call it fluff. Uh, now it's the question time. So hopefully you guys have some questions. Um, I am looking at the screen. So if you have a question, you can hit the raise hand icon. Uh, I should see it. Uh, also, you can send me a chat question uh, on here. Uh, chat's a little harder for me to see here, uh, but I'm going to blow it up right now. So I do have a question uh, from Dale. Dale got your question. It says, what is the duration uh, of lifetime service? Uh, so we can partner with you to develop a lifetime service with you. Uh, there are costs and tiers to what we will do. So it's up to you on how long we do that. As long as you own the equipment and wanna be a MECO customer, we'll partner with you and we can do a contract basis with you uh, that we will do uh, essentially whatever you want. Uh, we can do PM for you. Uh, we can do obviously service agreement with you. Uh, all that can be worked out and it, it's tiered. So it's dependent on what you choose uh, and there's a value assigned to that. And, and that's how we work through it. Uh, if you want more details, we can get that to you. Uh, let me know, you could shoot me an email here at the end that you're interested in that. And if anyone's interested in that, uh, I, I'm pretty sure we do have a pamphlet uh, that describes that. Actually, I do see Christina on the on the line here, and maybe she does have more info, or if we do have a pamphlet on that. Christina, I'm going to unmute you. Uh, you are self-muted. If you do have anything to add on, if we do have more information, uh, I'd appreciate that. We can get that off to Dale. Does anyone else have any questions? Perfect, another one. So another great question from Dell. So do we offer remote diagnostics? We do. Um, so with the COVID, and we we had a lot of these, these programs running uh, prior to COVID even happening. Uh, so we utilize, with every system we sell, uh, a piece of software called TeamViewer. You may or may not have heard of this. It allows us to remotely log into the system and see what you're seeing. So we can actually see the screen with you. We can talk on the phone with you and we can walk you through. And a lot of our service calls are easily troubleshot over the phone uh, or through TeamViewer to be able to, uh, to, to get you back up and running. If we do need a part service, uh, we realize some of the plants and some of the locations in the country, the way COVID is, we are not even allowed in. Even if we try and want to go there, uh, you might not allow us, your state might allow us, uh, allow us in there. So what we can do is we do have programs and packages uh, that we'll send you. So if you need a piece of hardware, something that actually needs physically swapped out of laser source, we have a booklet that would go with that component to your attention. Uh, not only will we walk you through it via the phone or live or FaceTime or TeamViewer, uh, but that pack will also walk you through how to change out that component. Uh, which is good. So we do have a remote diagnostic setup 
uh, we can log in, we can see all the functionality of the system, uh, and we can go back and uh, help you get back up and running, which is good. Um, I got a question here, uh, a few questions here. So let me go down through some of these. Uh, from Rob, can you mirror your Galvo head to Mark Logo's in tight one and a half inch gapped rack products? So Rob, not knowing exactly what you're talking about, um, I think I can unmute you. Do you have a microphone, I guess is my first question. Uh, if you can unmute. Yes, Bill, or not Bill, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we're with a company and our uh, products are in a spray wash rack. Okay. And they are, you know, several products of a spray wash rack. And traditionally, you mark from the top down in a, you know, fixed machine. But we have automation that uh, we want We want to know if we could stop this rack and attach your laser and, and mirror it sideways to get the, the correct focal length and use the robot and cameras to get the correct orientation where the robot needs to be and be able to use your laser mark in a tight space. Yeah, you should be able to move it around. The only consideration uh, I would have is the laser safety aspect of it. Um, so if this is going to be in an open environment, and, and really particularly if you're using a fiber laser, it, it becomes even more dangerous. So um, to be ANSI compliant, uh, to follow the LIA guidelines of how laser safety should be, it needs to be fully encased. Uh, we do sell uh, a system called uh, a safety seal. It's a patented design, but that, the more I think about it, it's more designed to mark on a surface and seal and pull away. Um, is it possible where you're doing this marking that it can be put in a room or it's it's kind of away from anyone that they can see the laser or is this out on a factory floor? Yeah, we could, we could uh, build the enclosure to encase, you know, the light beams and uh, one of the, my colleagues sitting here also said that the, the surface would be marked vertically. So this okay. is just one, this is just one thought. We have uh, our rack coming down a, uh, a spray wash line. The parts have been dried and we want to put the final corporate mark on it. And uh, without having a robot having to replace all the knives in a lay down fixture, you know, could we do it in our existing spray wash rack? Yep. And orientation and focal distance matters. So that's why we could use a camera along with the robot right. and, and try to mark in a tight space. Yep. Yeah, you, you'll be able to mark in a tight space for sure. Uh, the laser, I mean, we mark really small. Uh, you, we can mark, obviously, integrated circuit chips, you name it. But uh, we do a demonstration. It's it's on our blogs. It's on our website. To demonstrate it, we've marked the Gettysburg Atress uh, beside Abe Lincoln's head in a bubble, like a cartoon. Uh, so you need a microscope to be able to see it. So we can mark small. So uh, you're talking for one and a half inch gap. That, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, what we would spec out is obviously lens size, uh, which also would help maybe uh, with your offset and focal distance. The, the larger the lens you go, the further away you can be. Uh, so that's something to look into as you're thinking and designing it. Uh, we can work with you to give you those different lens sizes and what will mark on your material. Uh, and then you'll know how to set up and how far it'll be away and how to lay it out. So uh, great question. And we can definitely get you more info to help you continue on the path to see if this will work. Uh, but the orientation and everything doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, we should be able to have no issues with that. Great question. Uh, I have a question here from Paul. Uh, I'm gonna read it here as I'm digesting it. Uh, is there a way to see beam on time for our current lasers? Uh, is there anything to be done at maintenance intervals to extend life? So the current life uh, span or hour meter per se uh, of the laser system, currently we don't have that um, accessible uh, to be able to be viewed. Uh, it is something we are working on and then should be coming out as we go forward here. Uh, it is something we want to do and add. So there is more of a, um, a path or a punch card where maintenance intervals can be tied to kind of like a car. Uh, if you get to 60,000 miles, you need to do oil, you need to do uh, spark plugs. We want to kind of do that with the laser. So that is something that is in development to be able to do. 
Um, right now, though, currently, the way the laser is designed, it's not really that big of a deal uh, how, my, how long the laser's been running. Uh, sometimes it's because the laser can run in just on time. Uh, the hour meter, though, doesn't necessarily count the mark time, and that's what matters in our laser design. So, for example, fiber laser has 150,000 marking hours it can do. Uh, that is not just the laser sitting there idle and on. Uh, so we're looking to make that hour meter a little bit more smart onto the on time of the laser system. Uh, because I said that in a manner that I kind of separated the two is for the reason that the laser that's sitting there on, there's still fans running. Uh, so what happens is filters can get plugged because we are flowing air. Uh, so we would want to build a little bit of a more smart uh, service plan that says, yeah, fan filters need changed at this. It's not necessarily an hour time based on the laser hour meter. Uh, we are looking at a best way to uh, put that together, and we are looking to make that accessible and viewable to uh, to use an end user on the system uh, that will automatically maybe even show you on the screen that says, hey, filters need cleaned uh, or lens needs cleaned. So we are working on that. Uh, right now, currently, uh, it is not part of the standard product. Uh, we can build it in custom GUI interfaces, uh, but it's not a standard product right now, but we are working on it. So good question, Paul. Uh, Ken here has a question about the tolerance of the focal distance length. Uh, so again, that's, uh, like I said, there's different lenses um, and there's, as they go up in size. So uh, our standard bread and butter lens uh, or most sold is the 160 millimeter lens, and they go up to 254, seven inch square, 330, almost 10 inch square, uh, to a 420 millimeter lens, which is almost 13 inches square. Um, as you go up in lens size, your spot size, the, the smaller spot that your laser beam can emit out, uh, gets also larger. Uh, not only does it get larger, but your focal distance grows. As your focal distance also grows, uh, your depth of focus and what Ken is talking about, uh, the focal length distance <clears throat> also changes. So as you go up with different lenses, your focal distance does change. Uh, your depth of focus though, which is at the waist of that beam. So if the beam's coming out of the lens, it's kind of like an hourglass. And at that waist section is where it gets its smallest point. Your depth of focus is also in there. And that depth of focus is the distance it maintains that small spot size. So that actually gets longer. So depending on your material, you can actually have more forgiveness. So if you're marking on a radius uh, or a part where uh, our competition likes to push, you know, three axis for everything, uh, doesn't necessarily uh, need it. Uh, it is possible to do with a 2D laser, as long as your geometries fall within that depth of focus, uh, and you maintain your proper focal distance. So um, there is a tolerance to the focal distance and it's essentially that depth of focus. So for example, a 160 lens is roughly 175 millimeters lay. Long story short, it has a depth of focus of <clears throat> plus or minus 1.3 millimeters roughly. Uh, so that is your tolerance for that optic. So another, another great question. And Paul, Paul made a comment, yes, that's what I mean, uh, beam on time. Uh, yeah, so yeah, uh, our lasers, the factory um, rating on the laser on time is 150,000 hours uh, for the fiber laser technology. Uh, so the hour meter is, is tricky and that's, that's what we're trying to work out is how do, we, how do we manage it because there's two different paths it's rolling through. Uh, again, we have an overall system hour meter, and then we have the actual laser uh, source hour meter. Um, just because it has a lifespan on two doesn't mean <clears throat> that it won't last longer. So because it's rated 150,000 hours does not mean it's going to die or, or dilapidate to a point you can't mark at 150,000 hours. Um, the 150,000 hour rating is essentially 100% duty, uh, duty cycle. Long marks, uh, heavy duty. If you're not doing any of that, uh, just like anything, it will last longer. And, and again, if you can maintain it and clean it, uh, it's going to continue to be able to perform. So these are all excellent questions on it. And that appears to be the last question. I'll give you guys one more chance here. We're a little bit past the time, but that's okay. Anyone else have any more questions? 
Uh, as I'm waiting, also again, just uh, just a reminder: at two o'clock, Scott is doing another webinar, so you can still register and jump in there. <clears throat> also, uh, you're going to be seeing a promo code after the presentation that we're going to be sending out. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about our light rider laser system. Uh, that uh, we're going to give a really special discount on it. So if you guys uh, pay attention to your email, watch out. It's a coupon code uh, that you're you're all going to be able to get. So thanks for attending. Uh, it'll be able to unlock something for you on that. Uh, it's a heck of a deal. The Light Rider, uh, if anyone doesn't know, is a desktop laser system. We call it our entry level. Um, we've really value engineered it to, to get it stripped down, essentially, to do desktop work. Uh, so one peat parse un unload work or tray work. Um, it's it's not really set up to to communicate or operate with lo robots, but it's an entry level system. So if you have tool room, lab, R and D prototype work, uh, this is the laser that that fits all and and should be you know thought about when you're going through check boxes of uh, of trying to get new equipment. This this guy is is pretty awesome. So uh, if you haven't heard about it, check it out on our website. Uh, we do have a landing page for it. Uh, it's really slick. We're really really proud of it. Uh, and you'll be getting that coupon code that, that applies for it. Also, if you have any more questions or you want to see the system work, you can book a one-on-one -on -one demo uh, with one of our apps engineers or salespeople, and they'll be able to walk you through and answer any questions and show you uh, physically anything you want to see with the system uh, or walk through an application and, and, and show you uh, with more personal face-to-face -face, uh, time via GoToMeeting teams uh, or Zoom or, or whatever you need to communicate through, we can accommodate. So. Uh, you can sign up for all those. Looks like we don't have any other questions. I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, and again, if you have any other questions, let me jump back right to the beginning of the slide real quick. Uh, if you didn't get my contact information, it is josh.chrisley, uh, which is C-H-R-I-S-T-L-E-Y at mecco.com. Uh, shoot me questions. Uh, let me know. Let me help you. Uh, that's what we're here to do. So appreciate your time. Thanks and have a have a great afternoon.